Are you looking for a recipe your family is going to love? It's going to make them feel all warm and fuzzy inside because it is so good. Well, you're needing a million dollar recipe. Hey friends, my name's Susan and welcome to my home. Today I've got you four million dollar recipes that are absolutely unbelievable. I mean, a million dollars is what they're worth. So let's go ahead and start making some of the million dollar recipes. Get your ponytails up, cause you know it's time to cook and it's time to cook some amazing food. So come on, let's get to cooking. And we're gonna make a million dollar casserole. Basically, it's a spaghetti casserole. I may add and tweak a few things as you know I do, but this is what we're gonna start out with. I've got some butter, cream cheese, sour cream, some cottage cheese, some spaghetti sauce, some spaghetti. I've got some sharp cheddar and a little mozzarella I'm gonna put in there. And of course, the star of the show, hamburger meat I've gotta brown up. I may put some Italian seasoning in, I may do some garlic salt or something to rev it up a little bit, but we will see. So let me go ahead and get the hamburger browning and the spaghetti in the water. And then we'll come back and we will see what else we need to do. So let's go ahead and mix up the cheese mixture. Here's eight ounces of cream cheese. I'm gonna go ahead, it has softened. We'll go ahead and put that in there. Here is a fourth a cup of sour cream and eight ounces of cottage cheese. Go ahead and put that in here. Mix that up. Hopefully there won't be too many lumps. I did microwave the cream cheese to get it warm because it says to bring it up to room temperature. And um, you know me, I didn't have time to put it out an hour before I was making it, so I went ahead and put it in the microwave and let that nuke it up a little bit. But it's pretty soft and it seems like it's mixing up pretty good. All right, now that part's done. And the hamburger meat has been browned and I've drained it. I'm now going to add in one jar of traditional spaghetti sauce. All right. Go ahead and get that mixed together. All right. Now we're about ready to layer this thing up. I did save a little bit of the spaghetti sauce in the bottom of the container to go in this to go in the bottom. Kind of like I do with my lasagna. I put a little of the spaghetti sauce in the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and spread that out a little bit. That way the noodles won't stick. I'm gonna go ahead and put in about half of the cooked spaghetti noodles. I'm going to put in the whole cream cheese mixture going in. So it's not going to be layered up in multiple layers, just basically one layer, which is fine. Less you have to do actually makes it easier. Let me go ahead and try to spread this out as good as I can. Pretty good. Next thing is I'm going to put the rest of the noodles on there. Just kind of layer them out as much as I can. This was about the perfect size dish. I was worried it wasn't going to be big enough, but yeah, it ain't as big as I thought it was going to be. All right. Now I'm gonna cut up the butter and put the pats of butter on top of the spaghetti. And I did warm it up in the microwave so it's kind of <laughs> wanting to be. I'm 
Okay, there we go. Got all those. Normally in my lasagna about this time, I do sprinkle some garlic salt on it, just a little bit. Just through one layer, and I've got that done. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the whole rest of the meat sauce, the whole part of the meat sauce, on the top. And spread it out real good. Look at that. Now it says to put this in the oven and cook it on 350 for 30 minutes. I don't think we're gonna need that much time. I'm gonna do it on 15. Bring it out and then we'll do the next layer. Now the recipe says to top the top of it with some cheddar cheese. I'm gonna do a little mixture of cheddar and mozzarella because I'm not a big cheddar cheese with spaghetti kind of person. I'm a mozzarella. Want to make it kind of like lasagna kind of person. Because that's basically kind of what it is. I'm going to go ahead and put lots of mozz on here. I'm just going to spread it all around. Because it ain't going to take long. It says to put it in for about another 15 minutes. It's already been in for only 15. Because like I said, it said 30. It doesn't need it. I don't think so. There we go. So I'm going to put it in for another 15, uncovered, at 350, and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. And 15 minutes later, and here's what it looks like. Bubbly hot, <laughs> which I'm going to let this cool off, and I'm going to make a salad. I could have had some garlic uh, bread or something like that to go with it, but this is carb heavy enough. I'm not going to do garlic bread tonight. Just a salad. Try to be as good as I can, because I know this is going to be good. So let me go ahead, let this cool down, and we'll get everything plated up. And I've got a nice helping of the million dollar spaghetti casserole. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and add some salad to the plate for Danny to munch on. If you've never tried Million Dollar Spaghetti, you've got to make this the best spaghetti you will ever taste. And tonight I'm going to be making a Million Dollar Chicken Casserole. I've got some chicken I've shredded up, melted butter, I've got some cottage cheese, sour cream, and cream cheese. Yep, it's going to be rich. <laughs> a sleeve of Ritz crackers, some onion powder, and some garlic powder and a can of cream of chicken soup. So, let's go ahead and get all this put together in the pan so we can get this in the oven. So we can have food, supper, tonight. And it says to go ahead and combine the chicken and the spices, the cottage cheese and sour cream are going in. cream cheese is also going in. I have a spatula and I don't think that's going to mix it very well, but I'll try. <laughs> See how this is going to work. I do have to put in the cream of chicken soup yet. This is not doing a bad job actually. Just got to keep turning it around. And let me get the rest of the... Here's the cream of chicken soup going in. Try to get all of it because that's going to make it good and tasty. I'm again going to use the spatula. Well, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll use the spoon. Spoon seems to be the better option here. There we go. Now I've got everything mixed together. I'm going to go ahead and add the sleeve of rich cracker. I just need to crush them. That's <laughs> the bottom thing. I went ahead and crushed them in the sleeve. I'm going to go ahead and put them over the top of the casserole. My husband loves Ritz, so this is probably going to be right up his alley. All right. Of course, he does love it with the spinach dip on it, too. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and pour the melted butter over top. Trying to get as much saturated as I can. All right, 
Now it's time for this to go into the oven. We're gonna put it in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. This is 30 to 40. I'm gonna check it at 30. I think 30 is plenty good enough because everything's already cooked. I used a rotisserie chicken in this because it says to use cooked chicken. Life is simple. I like it that way. So let's get this in the oven. And it baked for 30 minutes and look at it bubbling. Ooh, we've got to let this one cool off before we can plate it. I asked Danny what he wanted with it, if he wanted vegetables or noodles or rice. He said noodles. So we're going to be putting some noodles under this on a plate so he can have something to eat. And it looks amazing. And let's get it served up. And here are the noodles that are going to be the base of the dish. Another million dollar recipe that tastes so good. I know your family's gonna love this one also. It's just that amazing. Let's make a million dollar ravioli casserole. I have got some cheese, it's tortellini, it's not ravioli, but that's what I could find. I've got some of my homemade spaghetti sauce, garlic, salt, minced garlic, Italian seasoning, Mozzarella cheese is in the back, sour cream, and cottage cheese is right there. And I've already browned up my hamburger, and I've just got to add a few things to it. I'm only making about kind of half a recipe because you know it's only Danny and I. But I'm using all the meat, but maybe doing about half of the noodles. So we'll see how it goes. But let's go ahead and get this in the 8x8 dish. I'm going to go ahead and add in two teaspoons of garlic. And I am down to the bottom of my garlic here, guys. I'm going to get some more. Yes, but you know I love garlic. There we go. And I'm going to let that saute up just a little bit. I don't want to burn the garlic. And I do have it pretty much off. It's still sizzling because it's so hot. Now I'm going to add in the... Spaghetti sauce, my homemade spaghetti sauce. Like I said, it's a little runnier than I would have liked, but it was my first time making it, and I think it turned out okay. It's just a little bit on the runnier side than what I would have preferred. But this meat will help it thicken up, or at least look thick, whenever I put it in the dish. I am gonna add a little bit of garlic salt, because I think it needs it, like I said, my sauce this time, first time making it tasted okay. Wasn't as good as I'd like, and it wasn't as thick as I would like. I'm also going to add in a little Italian seasoning in this one. There we go. It does need just regular old salt. There we go. And let me go ahead and stir this up so it's got all the good flavors in it. Now for the cheese mixture, I'm gonna use about a cup of cottage cheese, which you can use ricotta if you like. I like cottage, it's just easier for me to find. I mean, I live in Cherryville in North Carolina. We don't always do a whole lot of ricotta. <laughs> I'll tell you that much right now. About a cup of cottage cheese, and then I'm gonna do about half a cup of sour cream in this mixture, and it just makes it divine to say the least. I am going to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese, which I did not have in the lineup, but it just makes it taste so good. So that's going in. I'm going to just mix all of this up, and this is going to make a wonderful creamy cheesy mixture that is out of this world in this combination. And I'll show you, I'm going to dollop it on. So let's go ahead and get everything ready to put into the dish. The first layer I'm going to do is like you would do in any lasagna, and that is put some of the sauce mixture down, which I've got sauce and meat. I think I'm going to do about... Oh, that looks good. About a third of it. Because I'm going to try to get a couple different layers going in this one. There we go. Now the next layer I'm gonna do is the, it's supposed to be ravioli, but this is tortellini. I'm gonna go ahead and do the tortellini. And I'm not gonna 
cover every little inch with this. I want some around but not totally overcompensate for it. I want about two layers and I want to get it to where there's a good little bit in each bunch but not an overabundance. And that's starting to look kind of good. Now that that looks good, I'm going to go ahead and dollop on some of this cream cheese cheese mixture. I'm going to do about half of the mixture here. I'm just going to smooth it out because this wheel, Buddy Hauser, you got to. They're mowing the lawn next door, and he does not like lawnmowers. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and spread this out a little bit. Because whenever this melts, it will spread out a little bit more on its own. So I'm not too worried about that. Make sure I've got enough to cover the next layer, which I do. And I'm going to also put on some mozzarella cheese on this. We're just laying it up like you normally would a lasagna, except... It's not lasagna. And all this cheese is just going to make it awesome. There we go. It costs for two cups of cheese. You put as much cheese in this as you want. You do it your way. Because you know. You know how your family likes it. And we like it nice and cheesy. So that's not a problem. Now I'm going to repeat the layers again. I've got the next layer of the sauce down. I'm going to put another layer of the tortellini noodles. Like I said, I'm not going to put it to where they're jam-packed and there's no room in between. I want room in between. I want all this sauce to get around and you not to have tons of noodle whenever you bite into it. And that's looking pretty good. There we go. I'm going to put the remainder of the cheese mixture on top. Now this should have hopefully a good little bit in it because I want a nice big topping on this. All right. Now like I said, whenever this melts, it will melt all over the place. So that's not going to be a problem as to if I've got a little bit that isn't covered. It'll cover it. Last thing I'm going to put on here is some more mozzarella. I'm going to put a good little bit over top because I want lots of cheese pull on this one. I don't know if you're able to see it. I've got some frozen pieces and they're going to be unfrozen by the time I get done with them. I don't know if y'all know this, but if you buy the already shredded cheese, freezing it is a great way to keep it fresh. I mean, I do that with all my cheese. Block cheese, Shredded, already shredded cheese. It's just a great thing. Now, I don't know if I told you to go ahead and start your oven at 350, but you're going to do the oven at 350. We're going to cover this with aluminum foil and then put that in the oven. It says 30 minutes. We will see. It says 30 minutes, then uncover it and let it cook for about 15 minutes. Like I said, we will see. Last night's I thought would be about 30 minutes. It wound up being an hour. But it's definitely a different recipe. And of course, there goes Buddy. Daddy just came in the door. So let me get this covered and get it in the oven for a good 30 minutes. And I could have let the top get a little browner if I wanted to, but if y'all have watched my videos enough, you know Danny and I don't care for crusty tops. We like a good cheese pull though. And this looks like it's gonna be one. Look at all of those little bubbles going around. So let's get this on a plate and this million dollar recipe did not disappoint either all of these million dollar recipes are gonna be family favorites you just gotta try them because i know you're gonna love them and i'm gonna make some crock pot million dollar pasta i'm gonna do about half the recipe um, I don't think I'm going to do the full one, so we'll just go ahead and do about half. 
I've got some hamburger that I've already browned up. I've got some cottage cheese or ricotta cheese. I've got some minced garlic. I've got some sour cream, cream cheese, some cavatol, toppy, or whatever pasta that you like, some pos parsley flakes, excuse me, some traditional spaghetti sauce. I've got a little garlic salt and Italian seasoning that I'm going to be putting in, some water, and some mozzarella cheese. So let's go ahead and get this into the crock pot. I'm going to half in most of the ingredients. I don't know if I'm going to half in the spaghetti sauce or not. I do like a lot of spaghetti sauce. I'm going to pour in about half of this jar of spaghetti sauce into the bottom of the pot. Even though I'm half in the recipe, I don't think I'm going to half in the cream cheese and other ingredients into the recipe. I've got one eight ounce blocks of cream cheese. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. About a half a cup of sour cream is going in. A cup of ricotta cheese or cottage cheese as I usually like is also going to go in. Some minced garlic is going in next. And a sprinkle of dried parsley is going into this mixture. I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of garlic salt into this mixture also. And a little bit of Italian seasoning is also going in, just because it gives it lots of good flavor. Now let's give us a good mix. Try to get everything well incorporated and see how the spatula does. <laughs> That way we've got something that we can put in layers into the crock pot to kind of layer it up like you would a lasagna to some degree. And I've got this just about done. And let's go ahead and get all this layered up in the crock pot. Now I'm going to pour some cavatoli or silatini noodles on top of the spaghetti sauce. It says you can use the full, full 16 ounces. I'm just going to pour it to where it covers it because you know that's going to uh, enlarge whenever it gets wet. Let me make sure that everything is nicely covered. There we go. Now I'm going to pour half or 12 ounces of water in that one. Half of the meat goes on next the cheese mixture, and the spaghetti sauce goes on. And I'm going to go ahead and spread that out just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to add in more of the pasta on top of this. Until there's a nice little layer. I'm not big on too much pasta. Y'all know I like, I, I do it occasionally and don't really mean to put as much as I need. Okay. Now that looks really good. The next thing is going to be the meat is going in, which is the last of the hamburger meat. There we go. All right. I am going to go ahead and add another 12 ounces of water on top of this. The, the water is what's going to cook the pasta. So you want to make sure that your pasta is down below the water, which it looks like everything is looking really good on that end. I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more garlic salt on the top, just because that's me. I love me some garlic salt. And a little bit more Italian seasoning on top, just because that's what I like. Alright. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this on high. For the pasta, you need at least one hour, but that needs to be one hour where it's really nice and hot. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on high and check it back in about an hour and see how it's going. And then we'll see what we need to do next. And I've let this cook for about an hour and a half. And it's almost ready. The noodles need a little bit more cooking time. But I'm going to go ahead and put some cheese on the top of it. I've got some remnants out of a bag that I'm going to put on top. And I've got some more that I'm going to cover the rest of it with. And then I'm going to give it about 30 more minutes to cook. Like I said, it's been going about an hour and a half. 
and it's on high. So I'm going to give it about 30 more minutes. So that way that cheese will melt down real pretty. There we go. Let me cover it up. Put it on high for another 30. And then we'll see if we're ready to eat when I come back. And I gave it an extra 30 minutes. And here's what it looks like. So let's go ahead and get this on a plate with a little garlic toast. And it'll be time to eat. Don't forget that whenever you cook pasta in the crock pot, check your pasta. And whenever the pasta's done, then you're ready to eat. And this again, did not disappoint. So good. I told you those million dollar recipes, you have got to try them. They are so good. And if you haven't already, press that little button down below and subscribe. Press the bell and the all notification because you know you don't want to miss any of the good food and fun. Until next time, see you then.